Salesforce announces their AI suite, the EU is voting on the AI Act, and a church in Germany has just held what might be the first AI-powered religious service. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less, although man, is there more than five minutes of AI headline news today. We kick it off with a story that has a lot of people chattering, and that's the story of a church service held in Germany that was entirely powered by AI. The service was held as a part of the German Evangelical Church Congress, which is a biannual event held in Bavaria, Germany, and it was the brainchild of Jonas Simmerlin, who is a theologian and philosopher from the University of Vienna. Simmerlin worked with ChatGPT to come up with the themes of the sermon and then write the actual text, and then he created a set of AI avatars to actually deliver the words. Now, there was a lot of interest in this particular experiment. People started lining up hours in advance of the event, and ultimately more than 300 people were part of the service. Some gave it fairly favorable reviews, like Mark Jansen, a 31-year-old Lutheran pastor, who said, I had actually imagined it to be worse, but I was positively surprised how well it worked. But at the same time, many found the AI avatar somewhat lacking in the delivery. If you listen to my recent AI Red Long Read Sunday, you'll know that AI just doesn't always get the normal human cadence of things. And that seems to be doubly true in the context of a religious sermon. Still, it doesn't seem like the goal is a replacement of religious leaders. Simmerlin instead said that it was to show how it could help them, coming up with ideas for sermons or actually even writing them, freeing up their time for other needs within their congregations. Speaking of AI avatars, while it wasn't clear which service Simmerlin used for his sermon, there's a fairly good chance it was Synthesia. Now, Synthesia this morning announced their Series C funding round of $90 million at over a $1 billion valuation, putting them into the Unicorn Club. Their announcement blog post talks about just how far the generative AI space has come over the last five years. They write, It wasn't always this clear that generative AI would revolutionize content creation. Back in 2017, when we were still funding our AI research by selling Bitcoin, we almost went bust. We got turned down by close to 100 investors who were really only looking at predictive AI at the time. Today, they say over 50,000 businesses, which includes a third of the Fortune 100, are using Synthesia to create videos already. In addition to traditional venture firms, one of the new funders that they added in this round was NVIDIA. Next up, we move to a super cool story out of LA Tech Week. At that event, there was recently a virtual worlds hackathon, and the team that won created a fully playable role-playing game in just a single day. The reason they were able to do this was a totally different approach to programming that used AI-powered tools to move much more quickly. John Radoff writes, The core of our approach was using the Anthropic Claude LLM with its 100k context limit. This enabled us to maintain a long story with a high level of cohesion. The team also used Blockade Lab's Skybox Generator, which is something that we recently talked about on this show. One of our big themes has been the democratization of who can create what type of experience online. And while obviously these guys are programmers and already an entrepreneurial team, the speed with which they were able to wire together AI tools to create something actually playable suggests just how different it is to create in this new environment. Speaking of creating in the new environment, Facebook has joined Google in announcing a music-focused AI generator. NVIDIA's Dr. Jim Fan writes, Meta on its impressive open source streak hits another llama moment for music AI. Music Gen synthesizes music audio given text or melody prompt, accompanying melodic track, or even whistling and humming. Right now, Music Gen is available as an open source model on GitHub, or you can also go to Hugging Face and use their demo interface to create a 12 second clip. As Jim mentioned, you can drop a reference audio piece or even whistle or sing into your computer microphone to give it some guidance. One of the examples they gave when they announced it was turning a Bach melody into an 80s anthem. For those of you who are interested in this sort of music creation, I'm actually thinking about a video where I compare Music Gen and Google's Music LM pretty soon. Next up, one that we'll mention briefly because I'm going to do a full workup later. Salesforce had their big AI announcement yesterday, and the two main features were, one, they've doubled their generative AI fund from $250 million to $500 million, and two, they've announced their AI cloud, which is powered by something that they call their Einstein Trust GPT layer. Trust is, as you will see, Salesforce's bet on the big theme for enterprise AI. Now, meanwhile, over on the policy side, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair has said that AI could be the most substantial policy challenge ever. He recently co-authored a report arguing that the UK is not prepared for the challenges that lie ahead. The report, called A New National Purpose, says, quote, AI's unpredictable development, the rate of change, and its ever-increasing power means its arrival could present the most substantial policy challenge ever faced. 
for which the state's existing approaches and channels are poorly configured. Now, that said, the UK government did just announce that OpenAI, DeepMind, and Anthropic had all agreed to open their models to the UK government for research and safety purposes. Remember yesterday we discussed British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak saying that he wanted the UK to be the geographical home of global AI safety regulation. However, another contender for that title is, of course, the EU. This week, after 43 technical meetings and 12 political meetings over the last year and a half or so, the European Parliament is slated to vote on the AI Act. The AI Act has been somewhat controversial. As Axel Voss points out, of the 85 articles, 82 are focused on the risks of AI. At an event in London last month, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said that in its then form, they might not be able to comply with the EU AI Act. Altman went on to call the current draft of the EU Act overregulating. Now, this set off a firestorm in the European Parliament, with many members of that body speaking out against Altman's comments. One Dutch parliamentarian said, We shouldn't let ourselves be blackmailed by American companies. If OpenAI can't comply with basic data governance, transparency, safety, and security requirements, then their systems aren't fit for the European market. Terry Breton said the rules were not for negotiation, saying, Let's be clear, our rules are put in place for the security and well-being of our citizens, and this cannot be bargained. Now, a couple days later, after all these comments, Sam Altman backtracked and said, Of course OpenAI had no plans to leave the EU. If and when the AI Act passes later this week, we will do a full workup of everything that is contained therein. For now, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Not So Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.